Great shout. Attention, go. Yeah, all the four Ready, women please. from Wycliffe, Ella Fullman, really experienced the 16 year old, Catherine Burton, Yasmin Howe, and Stella Fielder. This is the semi final of the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup. Redwood Scholars USA on the left of your picture, Wycliffe Junior Rowing Club on the right of your picture. They want a place in Sunday's final. Who's going to win it? Oh, God. I mean, look, Wycliffe looked to have a slightly speedier of the two starts. Certainly the smoother. They are moving out somewhat into the middle of the river. You can just see there Redwood right on the boys. Wycliffe sort of veering off into the middle of the river, but razor focus there from Ella Fullman. She, of course, was selected to row for Great Britain in the Munich International Regatta, so an upcoming rising star she's going to want to take the Redwood scout, but actually Redwood looking like they've got the better, the stronger, the more powerful of the two stars, probably a seat up. Yeah, Redwood yesterday beat Hart, uh, well, they beat Hartley College earlier, rode through Tideway Scullers yesterday, so, you know, they've got flexibility in any part of the course they want. They did post the 220 to the barrier, Wycliffe, on the other hand, posted a 216, so I expect Wycliffe to come back into contention if those times are anything to go by, but conditions did vary a lot. I think Wycliffe have stopped the move and uh, maybe they're edging a little bit closer, but this looks to be a cracker. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic. I mean, Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup, it's done wonders for female sculling, not just in Great Britain, but actually all around the world. And we can see here these crews, they win the nationals in their respective countries. They want to come and win at Henley Royal, which is testament to the quality, the calibre that they perceive to be uh, present to race and compete against. But Wycliffe, you're right, Martin, just got to hang on here. They've got to make sure they don't go away. You can see they're actually the faster of the two moving boats, 16.7 kilometres an hour compared to Redwood, 16.1, underrating them slightly as well. Yeah, both crews at 35 strokes a minute. And uh, that data, the algorithm that does that data is taken over each stroke. They've been adjusting the algorithm through the regatta to give us a more accurate readout. And Wycliffe are moving, and that faster time they posted to the barrier, you can see the barrier there on the right of your picture with the yellow flag. Maybe they're going to be, if not in front, but, you know, probably just a couple of metres behind the women from Redwood Scholars USA on the left of your picture. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot from the front of the boat. Just see there the crews coming down towards us. Look, we've seen it time and time and time again, crews going out like an absolute bullet from the start, but then not having the... I suppose the beans, the energy, the legs to maintain that pace and then getting rowed down. I and mean, Wycliffe will have that in the back of their minds. They'll have watched some of the racing today. They'll have seen how the narrative has flipped throughout the race. They know that Henley's a long course. Redwood girls looking pretty composed at the moment. They're quite patient at the front end, aren't they? There's quite a big, you know, patient and then lever through, bodies opening out. You can really see that power in the middle of the boat. The two women, Georgina Hutchinson and Mina Baker with the sunglasses on. Look round there from Leah Hen, steering boat. She could just look straight down, but she kind of wants to check her course looking down. She's making the calls as well, isn't she, Tom? Yeah, saw her there. She just said, come on to her crew. They know that they're in control of this one at the moment. You can see a little look round there again from Lila in the bow seat. Don't want to be doing too much of that, because, of course, every sort of look round, it sort of moves the boat. It creates a bit of instability in the crew. Continual look drying, actually. I remember commentating on them, I think it was yesterday, in their race against Tideway Scarlets, and head was almost sort of spinning all the time. And, and although it's a straight course, Henley, it, the lack of sort of boys in the middle to demarcate one from the other makes it a bit difficult to work out sometimes where you are in the river. The Wycliffe woman, two man, Yasmin Howe, or two women, I do beg your pardon, Yasmin Howe, hopes to represent Britain in the Junior Internationals. There's her, just one up from the bow woman, Stella Fielder. Wycliffe girls all wearing sunglasses. And uh, the rhythm looks good, you know, they look focused. I don't think there's any reason for them to panic. You know, they're still pretty much in this race at the moment, Tom. Yeah, they absolutely are. A bit of a grimace from Ella Fullman in the strokes here. Of course, she is going to be responsible for driving her crew forward. She is almost the, 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 the strategy maker, the sort of difference maker in the strokes here. She's going to have to time think about, okay, when do I need to go? When do I need to take us up through the gears? Because it looks like Redwood, although Wycliffe is still in touch, Redwood in control here. Failing to move away, though, and, and like you've said already, Martin, clear water critical in these sort of contests, and they're not quite breaking it. They've got a very flat draw, Redwood. You look at the blades on their stroke size or port side, and they're very flat through the water. There's no sort of looms coming out. I see they've got tape around the looms, you know, around the looms of the blade, but they're very flat, which is very, very efficient, isn't it? 
Yeah, it is. I mean, no crew that I've seen in the UK row quite that Redwood do, and that's probably, of course, because they are USA national champions. You can see here moving slightly quicker at the moment than Wycliffe, and this is the time you want to be moving slightly quicker. Although there is a bit of deviation in the speed, and it looks like both crews rating about the same 34, 35 strokes a minute. But as we can see, the enclosures looming into view on the left-hand side. This is where the sprint will start to be thinking, OK, we know we've got about 600 metres left to go. When do we sort of go up a gear? Who goes first? It's like a game of chicken, Martin. Yeah, Redwood Scholars on the left of your picture, formerly Stanford Scholars, based up in North California. And uh, they've had a great regatta so far. There she is looking round again, Lilla Hen. And uh, maybe that's just the look round. Maybe it push, pushes them a little closer to Wycliffe, who are still in this race, the crew on the left of your picture. See the umpires launch. Budsir just following the two crews. Greg Searle in the back with his blazer, former British Olympic champion from Barcelona. But interesting there, umpire Andy Crawford, he thought about getting the flag out. You could just see, and then Redwood corrected and a smirk on the face. I think he knew that the girls had seen him go for the flag and he didn't have to use it in the end. But crew's now dead level, dead set, and they're coming into our view here, Martin, in the commentary box, which means they've probably got about 400 or 500 metres left to row, 50 or so strokes. So not long to go, and there is the calm features of the 18-year-old Caroline Phipps in the stroke seat of the Redwood Scholars crew. She's been focused all the way down, really well supported by Mina Bauer in the three seat behind her with the white sunglasses on. Georgia Hutchinson in the two seat, likewise with that peak cap. And Lila Hen has done a great job steering this crew right down the Berkshire Bank. Wycliffe, I think, do you reckon they're coming back into it, Tom? Not so sure. I think Redwood still have this under control. I think Wycliffe have tried to put in a couple of moves and failed to make any substantial dent on the margin. And they're just moving into the middle of the river, both crews here. That, that rudder move that, uh, that Lilla Hens put, put on is going to slow that boat down a little bit. It's quite a big kink, a sort of snake view, and it's straightened out again. That might give Wycliffe hope if they see it. If they can find something extra, the British crew could... There, there come the Americans out again. If they find something extra, the British crew could produce a fantastic finish in this event. Yeah, they need to find an extra gear urgently because I can see them coming towards me. They've probably got 15 strokes left. Redwood up to a length. I think this is going to go the way of the girls from California. So it's Hen, Hutchinson, Bayer and Phipps from Redwood. They have dominated this race from the first stroke. They are going to take this semi-final and move into the final of the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup. They have beaten the young women from Wycliffe Junior Rowing Club A crew. And uh, that was a cracking race. I think they want to sort their steering out just in the last part of the race. There were a few wobbles there, but I guess, you know, with the wind coming and, uh, and that sort of stuff, it's understandable. It is, it is, and you're right. They, against more sort of composed opposition, you can see their crowds absolutely loving it, enjoying the show the phones out, the acclaim from the bank, but they're going to have to think about their steering in the final. You know, they're going to face either one of Clare's Court School or Shiplake College who go up against each other in the last race of the day. But that's that's the, the penultimate hurdle navigated for Redwood. As I said, they came here for the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup one step closer onto Sunday's final.